Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about the monthly dashboard pages. It took me a long time to figure out how I was going to use each dashboard in each of my planners. And even now still, I'm still kind of playing around and making adjustments, but I thought I would set up how I'm using them as of right now in hopes to kind of help you figure out how to use them or just if you're curious. So on this page, I just uh, have idea lists and I just kind of anytime I think of something especially when I'm kind of content planning or I just have a thought pop into my head I just pop it down here and then I go back and look if I'm looking for ideas or if I'm like oh yeah I had that idea I hope I wrote it down this is usually where I wrote it write it down all right so on this page in this first box this is where I keep track of releases for my Etsy shop so I usually just plug in the date and then what is being released that day and I'm hoping to have quite a few new releases in November then here I track monthly goals for each so I just divide I usually have an Etsy goal an Instagram goal a YouTube goal and then maybe just a general overall kind of planning magic goal and then here is where this is new because I hadn't been doing videos consistently until this month so I'm going to use this to write down the videos that are posting each of those days and then here is my insta post tractor tracker so I'm just gonna use this to track what days I actually post and so I can see if there's kind of a pattern to that and then on the monthly spread, I haven't set this up, but I usually use this to lay out my content. So I usually use a red pen to mark if I'm gonna post a YouTube video that day and what video. And then I also track if I have ideas or specific deadlines for Instagram posts or anything like that. And so that is the content planner. So this is my memory planner. It's a neutral vertical binder that started January of 2020 and I use the Erin Condren monthly sticker book for the stickers. So here I post different photos of, from the month, just some of my favorite photos that I take. So I'm moving on to this page. In this first box I just wrote important dates and usually I just write down things that happened that I want to make sure I remember so if I'm going back through my memory planner looking for oh when did we last do our date night or go out for dinner or something like that usually I have put it in here and so I can go back and f look at that then here I use the section for this month and I just try and put four real highlights of the month and then here I write out what we did for our date night. We try and do a date night once a month. And so I just like to keep track of that kind of special here. And then here is favorite story of the month. And I usually just write out something that happened that I really want to remember, especially if it's something little that maybe wouldn't go into the full spread because it was just a little thing that happened, but it's just something that I want to make sure I remember. And sometimes I have more than one. And then on the monthly spread, I put pictures if I have a specific picture that I took that day. And if not, I usually just decorate it with some themed stickers. And then at the end of the month, there's another page for that month, another line page. And I usually use this as a bit of a journaling page. And I just kind of write out what happened that month and maybe any extra thing I want to make sure I remember. So that's the memory planner. All right, and then this is my hourly planner. And I use this as kind of more work focused and house to do's and stuff like that. 
So here I just put apartment to-do list. So some of it's cleaning, some of it's, oh, I want to buy this, some of it's, you know, oh, I want to organize this area or we need to fix this or do this project. And I just like to have kind of a running to-do list for that. So then moving on to this page, this is the November meal ideas. So sometimes if I'm looking at Pinterest or if it's just like, oh, the weather's getting cold, I want to make more Instapot meals and stuff like that, I come here and I write it down here. And I usually make sure I update this list before the month starts. And then when I go into meal plan, I have kind of this list of meal ideas that maybe I wanted to try or just things that we wanted to have again. And it just helps me meal plan a little bit easier. Then on this page, I don't actually use this box. I'm not really sure what I want to use it for. So if you guys have suggestions, let me know. And then here I write to do. So just anything I want to remember to do that month, I just make a list and then I can kind of plug it into my plans as I go because I usually plan daily in this planner specifically. It's a great place to have lists because I can come back to it and go, okay, so this week I have a bit of a quieter day. What can I get done off my monthly to-do list? Then here, these are usually just basic goals. Sometimes I incorporate all some of the goals from all the planners that I have. Sometimes it's very specific to maybe things that I just want to get done in the house or something like that. And then here I did date, I do date night again, but this is where I put date night ideas and, you know, maybe possible dates and stuff like that. I want to find a more creative way to use this, but I'm still thinking about that. Let me know how you use your dashboards or different monthly prep pages and we can have a discussion in the comments because I definitely have spots where I'm not happy with how I'm using them right now. So this is my horizontal planner and I use this as a journal and so here I kind of write a letter to myself, maybe things I want to think about, things I want to kind of leave in last in the previous month, things I want to carry over. Just kind of encouraging things and I actually like to go back and read these I like to go back like I'll before I write November I'll read October and see if I kind of addressed the things I talked about or the things I wanted to do and what I could do going forward and then on this page I write a letter to myself at the end of the month so usually I go back and so when I go to fill in the previous page, I'll go back and I'll read October's and then I'll write October's end of the month and then I'll write November's beginning of the month. And it's just a great way to kind of check in and really think about the future, but also kind of reflect on what happened in the month before. And then here I usually write an encouraging note to myself so maybe some if sometimes I have a word I want to focus on that month sometimes I have just a thought or a quote and that's usually what I kind of write in here then personal goals I will like try to use it to keep track of you know what self-care do I want to do that month or what can I really strive to do better within myself and then here in December, I usually write, what do I want to think about going forward for December? So with December in mind, what do I want to focus on? And then here, I like to just write out things that I'm grateful for. And I usually write out a bunch at the beginning of the month. Sometimes I'll come back to it and write something in as it happens. And then sometimes I end up filling it out more towards the end of the month. So that's in my journal. And then the last one, this is my vertical and this is definitely my catch-all planner this is my go-to planner especially if I'm in any kind of planner funk this is the planner I pull for so here I keep November to-do list and I break them up into sections so just flipping back 
to September because my October page was actually pretty empty. Um, I just do important to buy, cleaning to go, apartment and marriage and just things that I want to do. Sometimes it's to, you know, help improve my married life and sometimes it's things I want to do for the apartment or I usually have monthly things that I want to focus on cleaning and different stuff like that. That's what will go here. And then here is November memory. So I'll write out each week and I just write a memory from that week. And I just like to have, even though I have a specific memory planner and a journal, I really like to have it in my main planner too. As I said, this really is where all my planners kind of merge into little bits of each planner is in this planner. So here I have an important dates again and I just write out what we have going on, any plans so that when I plan for the week I can just come back and check this list and make sure I've got it all checked off. Then here this is goals and this I try and do. Uh, I try and take from each planner so I actually have like a planning magic goal and I have my budget goal and my family goal and kind of my personal goals and I like to just again as I said I like to make this kind of a catch-all for all my planners and then here I write any important dates for the next month that I already know about in advance and then here are my three habit trackers I just made these myself all the stickers on this page actually I made myself and here I just track I track cat care so just make sure that they got their teeth brushed and all that stuff work out and then no spends and that is how I use all the different dashboards in my different planner all right so that is how I use the dashboard pages in all my different planners let me know in the comments down below how you love to use your dashboard. If you have any great ideas to share, that would be great to hear. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.